Well, today what I'm going to do is make a sculpture of a swan. Now, I've cut my swan out, and I'm going to draw around that little template on here and then cut it out. I've done several of these before, but I've always done them with concrete rather than resin -crete. And I want to see how well it comes out using resin crete and whether I can carve into it afterwards. And this foam is the foam that you get in packages when you buy something. I never throw it away. I always keep it because there's always something that I can do with it. See, there we go. That's come out quite nice on there. And all I'm going to use is a sharp blade and go around on the inside like this in a zigzag motion all the way around to cut that out. Quick thank you to everyone that got me a coffee last month. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I'm currently saving all the coffees because I'm having to move house and I can't take my studio with me. So as a result, I'm going to have to try and reset up again from scratch. So to allow me to keep making videos both on this channel and the other channel, that's what I'm saving all the coffees for. If you'd like to buy me a coffee and help me out and support me, the link for that is in the the description below. I've cut all that out now and what I'm going to do this time is try something a little different. Normally I cast straight into this as it is. I put it on a base and cast it and it gives me like a textured effect around here that I then have to sand off and it does take a bit of time to sand off. So what I'm going to do this time is cover this with some clear sticky tape like this on the inside. I don't want to stretch it too much or push it out of shape in any way. I just want to try and get a much smoother result from it. I'm just going to push that in and then it's going to avoid all these little bobbly bits here. I've covered this all. The only places I couldn't get it covered were right on the tips here. But other than that, it's fine. And all I've done is cut out a piece of cardboard and covered it in tape. Because now that'll give me enough resistance that when I want to demold this, it will demold really easily. I need to connect this to this to stop the resin creatures rolling out. And all I use for this is some double-sided sticky tape. And I go right up to the very edge like this, all the way around. And then I can take that tape off and that will stick really well to that. We've got that now all done all the way around the outside and I'll soon find out if I've missed a bit <laughs> once the resin creek starts walking away or, or floating away. What I'm doing is making sure I've got that really sealed round all the way and now it's time to mix up my resin creek. For those of you that haven't used resin creek before, always mix it by 10 to 3. So that's 10 of the powder to 3 water. Don't do it the other way around because if not it won't cure. For instance, 100 grams of resin creek to 30 grams of water. So I've got it all mixed up now and this is going to be the proof of the pudding to see if this is going to leak out. Hopefully it's not going to leak out. I've used the quick cure one here rather than the 25 minute cure because I want this to cure up as quickly as possible. It should be ready in about 30 minutes to demold and then we can come back to it. This has been curing now for just over 30 minutes so it's still a little warm from where it has an exothermic reaction. What I'm going to do now is take this base off and I will use this cardboard base again. Now you need to be really careful with this because it's still very fragile and the likelihood is I might break the neck off because I would be much better off waiting now until tomorrow to take this off. But I'm too impatient. Anybody else like that? <laughs> so I'll use that bit of cardboard again for the next one. And then hopefully I should be able to just pull this out like this and demold it. Now there is a little bit of underpour here where it obviously didn't stick down properly. But that doesn't matter. We can get that out. And so there's the swan, although obviously it still does need a lot of tidying up. But it should sit there like that. Now how I'm going to tidy it up is, first of all, I'm going to put the actual pattern back on it so I know where to trim up. And I haven't got any carbon paper for some reason. I normally have loads of carbon paper. So all I'm going to do is rub some pencil over this so that it leaves a bit of an impression where I want it. Line that up there like that. And this will be really easy to pour while it's still soft. And a lot of this is just literally over pour. So it will come off really easily. Rub over those bits where I put that pencil. And that should leave me a mark there. So I know now that where the wing has got to go. 
and I know where everything else has got to go. And as you can see, that is just over poor. And one of the easiest things I found to be able to get this nice and smooth at this stage is just use a blade. Well, I've done the preliminary carving of the swan, as I said, and I've done the wing. All I need to do is duplicate that wing on this side. So to make life a lot easier for me, I'm going to draw a little pattern of this wing and then put it on the other side so i get it looking at least a little bit similar because if not it could look a very very different wing and then taking my knife i can remove enough just so that the wing is standing out a little bit more so far everything i've done has been done using this blade so now what I'm going to do is finish off this swan's wing here and then I'm going to add a few bits of detail to it and possibly play around with the head a little bit more so it's more of a rounded head on here coming off on a neck and I'll be doing that in exactly the same way as I'm doing this. I mean you don't have to do any of this, it looked quite nice in its rough form we well, finished doing all the carving that i want to do to it now i put a little bit of detail on the wings i've also put some detail on the back carved a little eye in and give it a little bit more shape now you could leave it like that i quite like some of the carve marks that are in there but actually what i'm going to do is just give it a gentle sand all over and try and smooth those off a little bit and it sands really nicely i'm not pushing too hard because i still want some of those carved bits in there this way i can just get the finish that i'm looking for a more even finish so look how lovely that does sand up. Just finishes it off really well, I think. Well, finished off sanding it now uh, as much as I want. I've still left some carving marks in it in places. And now what I'm going to do is seal it ready for its painting. What I'm going to be using to seal it with is a mixture 50-50 of matte varnish and water. And that'll be my first seal for it. Just give that a mix in. And then I'll go over the whole thing, paint that on and seal that in. Now that's all dried and lovely and sealed, what I'm going to do is paint it with some gold paint. I really like this gold paint because it's not at all expensive and also <laughs> it gives a great coverage. While that's drying, what I'm going to do is make a base of the swan and all I'm using is some pre-cut coaster mould and I'm going to glue those two together like that with a bit of wood glue and then I can paint them once they are dry. Get that as central as possible. Pop a clamp on that. And that won't take too long to dry. It gives me a great base to be able to put the swan on. Well, that's dry now, so I can take that off and that isn't going to go anywhere. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this with the Arteza Blue because I really like that colour. Let that all dry and then I'll show you how I'm going to attach the swan to this base. Well, the swan's all finished now and dry and all I need to do is add it to this base and I know exactly where it's going to sit and how I'm going to do that is my cotton wool and super glue trick. I put quite a bit of cotton wool in there and some super glue. Now what I'm going to do is pop that onto there, push it down quite tightly. It was on there like that and then all I have to do is push this down onto there like that make sure it's connected and then give it a quick spray with this super glue activator well there we go my swan's all finished now i really like the way the base has come out and i have put some foam on the base of that as well i think it looks great i mean i'm no expert carver as you know just with a little bit of know-how or just having a go you can get something that looks really good well i hope you've enjoyed this video boot that like button hit that subscribe button and make sure you check out the video that will be coming up next on how you can make money using resin crate but most of all enjoy your crafting take care bye